They're selling an erection boat. I... Stop it. it. Welcome. Welcome to the Naked Apple. Thank you. Here we are once again. In all our glory. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got all the cables switched back around, right? I think so. Okay. It should have just been my camera and the... Now that we're actually... In the middle of the show. And <laughs> Let's I look make over sure we're like, connected oh, to everything. Wait a minute. <laughs> Double check that. Oh, okay, yeah, sound came through. Yeah, we're good. All right, we should be all right then. Uh, well, that's enough of this. Pre-show checklist, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is even that? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, welcome to the Naked Apple where... It feels like redemption is the hardest thing to find because well, everybody knows you never go full retard. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> and here we are, two of them. It's <laughs> the perfect place to sneak that in. So redemption is difficult to find because everybody knows you never go full retard. <laughs> Wow. Redemption tactical for all your redemptive needs, tactically speaking, of course. You actually were telling the truth. I do that quite a lot. Yet people are always surprised. It's a good thing they don't actually pay us to do these little bits. <laughs> yet. They don't pay yet. us yet. At some point, somebody is going to leave them a review. Help us help That just them. says hi. <laughs> hi. Five stars and hi. They didn't even buy anything. They just <laughs> five stars and said hi. Five star review and said Hi. <laughs> What's with all these little apple emojis everyone says? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Uh, do it. <laughs> Please. Link in the description below for all their wonderful things. <sighs> with that out of the way, um, it's been a couple of weeks. It has been. It's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple of weeks. I had a unhealthily busy week last week. Yeah, oh, that happens. Yeah, yeah. End of summer, you know, it's naturally everyone wants to do everything. Of course. Naturally. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So we're making up for it this week by doing exactly what we would have done anyways. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Starting off, of course, with our weekly dose. That is the vitamin B. It's Gonna never fun editing that later. It's never flawless. <laughs> Welcome to your vitamin B. Thank you. We have the news for you today. As many men have often wondered, what is it that causes my wife's insomnia? <laughs> New study finds no connection between wife's insomnia and her watching TikToks until 3 a.m. Can't imagine. Not a single connection. No correlation. We'll never whatsoever. find an answer. We will never know. We will never know. In other news, should have tried this years ago. RFK's voice clears up after a small sip of water. Cut! God dang it. <laughs> I'm going to have to try that. Wow. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Water. Water does good things for your body? Nobody ever told me that. Hey, he's handicapped. We're not going to... Oh, shotgun to it. Okay. 
Speaking of RFK, Trump adds a Kennedy in hopes he will draw all the sniper fire. <laughs> Is it too soon? Probably. Is it hilarious? Absolutely. <laughs> Attorney General reminds Americans that questioning the 2024 election is illegal unless Trump wins. Which case it's not. Of course. Because there's no way he could do that legally. <laughs> we have an exclusive for you today. Nine weird things Tim Ooh. Walls has lied about. Ooh. Yes. Number one. Said he has a super hot girlfriend, but she's in Oklahoma doing some modeling right now. Number two. Claimed he saved Ares in Final Fantasy VII. Taking a sip was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Insisted he once assembled a bed from Ikea in less than four days. Blasphemy. Number four. His last name was originally spelled Waltz. Number five, claimed his uncle worked at Nintendo and got him free games all the time. Wait, I've seen this kid before. Number six, claimed to be the author of Hebrews. <laughs> Number seven, said he's from a state called Minnesota. Everybody knows that state doesn't exist. <laughs> Number eight claimed every dog is born with the same with the name Scout. <laughs> I don't know why that Hebrews one got me so good. <laughs> And last but not least, number nine, claims to be a man and not just a giant toad in a man suit. It's very specific. It is very specific. Speaking of things that are very specific, post office issues new commemorative Kamala Harris freedom stamp. <laughs> freedom. Let freedom <laughs> ring. Freedom true. Freedom. freedom. <laughs> In other news, Harris's team asks if her mic can just be muted for the whole debate. <laughs> <laughs> Reporter who asked Kamala a question charged with hate crime. <laughs> uh, Madam Vice President, can you tell us about your foreign policy? The reporter asked <laughs> with clearly vicious and evil intent. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? She needs Greta Thunberg on her team to just stand in front of her. How dare you? A few stories from the DNC. Choose joy, Bellows, angry old man. Which one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kamala had to explain recently that 93% of staff quit because they just couldn't handle the joy. It's just too much. It's just too much. Well, I can only handle so much joy. <laughs> oh, it's never an inappropriate time to memorialize our fallen soldiers. Kamala solemnly places joy sticker on Tomb of Marine killed in Afghanistan. Boo. <laughs> yeah, that's not very nice. That implies that she actually went. <laughs> Another news from the DNC front. Oh, no. Man at DNC thinking he was in line for a food truck accidentally gets a vasectomy. <laughs> Oopsie poopsie. He was looking for a sip and he got a snip. <laughs> I said snip. I said sip. I said sip. <laughs> Uh, new study shows nine out of ten astronauts choose to be stranded in space rather than board a craft built by Boeing. <laughs> that story is hilarious. And 
<laughs> Last but not least, the UK Prime Minister has gone on record recommending citizens avoid stabbings by submitting to the Holy Quran and acknowledging Muhammad as the one true prophet of Allah. Peace be upon him. Freedom. And this has been your Vitamin B. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It's lovely. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. The author of the Hebrews. <laughs> I, <laughs> that shouldn't have been that funny, but it it's, was, apparently. It's, it's not. It's not that funny. <laughs> the funniest thing about that is that you find it so I, it funny. It's the best one of the lot, apparently. <laughs> I'm just as shocked as you are. I, don't know, I, I thought the comment about every dog being named Scott, uh, Scout... I mean that's that's was pretty one, good, yes. considering his pictures of him walking his dog, and each picture has a different dog in it. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with this dog. Oh, I'm a man just like every other man in this country, with my best friend out on a walk, and then coming home. Those are two different dogs, sir. Did you lose your dog while you were on the walk? Do we need to call you Biden 2.0? I gotta... This, this, this reminds me. Oh, okay. You like British humor? Generally, yes. Generally. You're a man, so I presume that, generally speaking, men enjoy British humor more than women. I don't understand why. Sometimes my genius... <laughs> It generates gravity. <laughs> so, so there's a show for the Brits um, called, oh, crap, what's it called? Only Fools and Horses. Ah. So what exactly? And the Tim Walls dog thing reminded me of this. So every dog is named Scout. He's got a different dog in each picture. Um, let's see if I can get this. But every one of them is his dog scout. Yes. So <laughs> this, this is Trigger's broom. And he's gotten received this little medal <laughs> for his well maintained broom. He's ma he's a maintenance worker in this city or whatever. And he's explaining how he got the medal. So what exactly is he award for? For saving the council money. I am to mention to her one day that I've had the same broom for the last 20 years. <laughs> I'm very impressed and said to have a medal. 20 years. That's a long time, Dave. Yeah? Well, that's two decades, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't go that far. But it's a long time. <laughs> Just, just a second. If you've had that broom for 20 years, have you actually swept any roads with it? Well, of course. But well, I look after it well. We have an old saying that's been handed down by generations of road sweepers. Look after your broom. <laughs> Did your broom look after you? No, Dave. It's just look after your broom. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I've done. I've maintained it for 20 years. <laughs> this old broom has had 17 new heads and 14 new handles in its time. <laughs> How the hell can it be the same bloody broom? <laughs> well, here's a picture of it. What more proof? <laughs> Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> sounds about right. same broom, <laughs> so broom, <laughs> seventeen new heads and fourteen new handles in its lifetime. <laughs> Here's a picture of it. What more proof do you need? <laughs> Tim Waltz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But the bracket that holds the, the, or the screw that holds the head onto the handle. He did not say he had to replace the screw. He didn't say he had to replace the screw. So technically. So technically, yes, it is the same 
It's the same. Unless it's the type where the handle actually screws into the head, which it did kind of look like that. It might have been. I was just trying to give him an excuse. Get out of here, you advocate of the devil. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... Thanks, Satan. (laughs) Uh, It's subtle, actually. (laughs) And while we're here laughing... You're, uh, you mentioned the, uh, well, sorry, not you, Ecom mentioned, uh, the astronauts. Yes. And Boeing. Yes. The full story behind that is just comedic. Ah, yes. BBC could not write. (laughs) Monty Python would be proud of the sketch. That could be written. <laughs> they really have such an unfortunate acronym for their news news channel. <laughs> British Broadcasting Company? Yes, that is yeah. what they Horrible. say it stands for. They admit that they're British, for one. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go to the Urban Dictionary and look at BBC. That's a terrible, awful idea that you should never participate in <laughs> how innocent do you want to be <laughs> um no so boeing flies up there and says you know it was a successful flight even though yep sure a couple of our engines didn't quite work on the way up and yeah there's a big helium leak um but yeah this is overall it's a successful flight oh okay hey it's time for the astronauts to come back down Yes. So, well, this is not a mundane detail, Michael. <laughs> so about that helium leak, we, we, we don't know how to fix it. Oh, okay. But they could still get back home since, you know, they got up with the leak. Well, maybe. Um, we're we're, we're going to try to fix it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Astronaut's going to go out and fix it. Well, they don't have the ability to go out and fix it. That's too damn bad! But, but you're going to fix it. Oh, we'll find a way to fix it. Without the ability to fix it. Yes. Okay, you get Apollo 11 this. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> or is it 13? Which one is it that they have to hodgepodge stuff together to get back home? Armageddon. That's oh. <laughs> do not ride on the nuclear device. <laughs> and then, uh, and then talk started swirling around of, are we going to have to rescue him? No, no, we don't, we're gonna, not going to have to rescue him. No, no, this, this, this is a learning experience. We're learning a lot from this maiden flight voyage of manned craft for us. Oh, okay. What are you learning? We don't know what we're doing. Um, Lost it? No, no. Can you, just, <laughs> can you imagine those psychopaths? <laughs> and uh, a lot of back and forth with that later. Then they finally decided, they kind of started looking over at uh, SpaceX and Elon Musk. Uh, could they save us? <laughs> They save the astronauts that are stuck up there. They're not stuck. Okay. Well, could they? well, I mean, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We need we need Elon Musk to to rescue our astronauts that are stuck in space. Yes, they're stuck in space. Okay. So he's he's just you just got to move your craft out of the way, and then we can dock SpaceX and get them in there. About that, we can't undock the spacecraft. Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? I am Arthur. <laughs> what do you mean you can't undock the spacecraft? Well, we can undock it. It's just someone has to be inside the ship to undock it. Oh. Well, they could undock it, then spacewalk back, right? We don't have the ability to do that. (laughs) 
Well, and the ship can't re-enter Earth's atmosphere? No. Not safe. Well, I was going to say, it can. <laughs> in one piece? Just not in one piece. A blaze of glory? <laughs> All right, so how, how do... Well, we didn't install software to do a remote release of the thing. Oh. Well, Son of a You done messed up, A.A. Ron! Well, can you upload the software? Yeah, yeah, we can find a way to, we can, we can find, um, yeah. Yeah, we can totally send information to him. How do we send information to him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so when, when Dragon X gets up there, um, your astronauts will have to plug in, uh, to the capsule to, you know, have life support and all that stuff. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, our suits aren't compatible for doing anything like that. We so Elon's got to bring extra suits for your guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a way to get the suits on to their ship? So that they can put on the space suits to go and be rescued. <laughs> like, this is the same Boeing that was having problems keeping the doors on their airplanes leading up to this space flight. <laughs> but hey, it's okay. Their engineering team is a complete and total diversity hire. So, <laughs> their bases are covered. <laughs> Good news, everyone. <laughs> Elon's coming to save us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're running out of food. <laughs> we, our two-week trip has only been three months. <laughs> Oh, and fun fact, apparently Elon is the only one that knows how to launch a rocket at night. <laughs> what? He says he's doing the la rocket launch at 3 a.m., which is poo-pooed by NASA and Boeing and Blue Horizon and whoever else has a space program. Can't launch at night. Do it. You, you do realize that rockets don't care if the sun is up. <laughs> Once they get to space, it's kind of dark. I... <laughs> but Elon Musk, he's the fool and all that stuff because he supports Donald Trump or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had to. That was on my chest. Apparently, I had to get it off my chest because it's just too funny. I almost worked for them. <laughs> for Boeing? Almost. I applied for an entry-level... You were obviously overqualified. I applied for an entry-level machining job early on in my machining uh, stuff. And I was declined through their automatic computer thing for having lack of experience for my entry-level... <laughs> because you were overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll just not do that, I guess. Apparently. That's before I learned the trick of uh, copying the job description into your resume. Putting it in the smallest print possible, changing the font to changing the font color to white. <laughs> Pasting it into your resume. So then when the computer system does the search for the proper stuff, it has everything that they're looking for in their automatic process. And then when they go to print it out, it doesn't show up at all. Huh. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> That's rather brilliant, really. <laughs> Actually. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. Life hack for next time you need to get a job. <clears throat> Anyways. All that rambunctious silliness aside... 
a uh, good uh, a good button with all the buttons Mike's already pushed to sum up the handful of stuff that we have for you would uh, sound a little bit like this when it is uh, depressed. Maybe. There's an old <laughs> saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. It should be disturbing how much of a go-to this actually is. <laughs> And how well it fits with everything. Everything, yeah. Always. So a epic big win for free speech, according to the House Judiciary GOP. Mark Zuckerberg just admitted three things. The Biden-Harris administration pressured Facebook to censor Americans. Facebook censored Americans. And third, Facebook throttled the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yay. Yeah. Woo. So Woo. he admitted to those things. So what is he getting punished with? His punishment is he admitted to it. And he feels really bad. Really bad. Mm. You know, I, I seem to recall that he was in front of Congress answering questions where he denied all of that. And now he's written a letter to Congress saying, uh, yeah, I lied to you. So now, uh, now he's, he's going to face all the repercussions for it. Surely. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, I just, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, yeah, I, I know we know, we know everyone knows we already know. We know. (laughs) And well, it's a big win for free speech, except it's not because you're not doing anything. How exactly is it a big win for free speech? Listening to a couple of uh, <clears throat> commentators on this, they suspect that uh, Zuckerberg and probably some other um, Silicon Valley. Uh, I mean, he admitted to it on Joe Rogan two years ago, so. Right. <laughs> and? Um, but what, what they're thinking is happening here is. Uh, Two things. One, he's joined an MMA club or something like that. Some sort of martial arts, something or other club. Yes. So he's around a lot more testosterone than he probably is otherwise. Ah. So that might be rubbing off on him in more ways than one. Um, and then uh, on top of that, there might be the whole 25% unrealized gains. That's kind of weighing on him. <laughs> Why else would you send a letter admitting to Congress that I lied? (laughs) Meanwhile, our stuff on Facebook is still extremely throttled, along with people with a lot more influence than us. It's fine. It's fine. fine. They're, they only inf- uh, they only filed a superseding indictment against Trump for January sixth <clears throat> today. Facebook? No. Oh, the oh the grand jury something. Jack Jack Smith was the one that yeah. filed it, but yeah. he's one of the Biden Harris special counsels. Uh huh. <laughs> he found a way to go around the Supreme Court. In the DOJ. He's attempting to. It's not an insurrection charge, though. Sure. 
which I, I think is funny because there's a lot of people. I can't vote for Trump. He's an insurrectionist. Show me where, who the charge is. Who who charged him for being an insurrectionist? And uh, when, when, where is the hearing for him being charged as an insurrectionist? Well, there isn't one. Where, ah, where, there, therefore, he is. Where is the not. guilty verdict of him being an insurrectionist? Uh huh. The man is still walking free. He has not been found guilty by a, uh, a jury of his peers for any of these things that you're claiming. Well, he he's guilty of rape. Uh, no, uh, no, that's not what that was. That's uh, that's that kangaroo court deciding that he had to pay a crazy lady whose story changed. Multiple times, mm-hmm. even during the proceedings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With no corroborating witnesses. Yeah. So he was, wasn't he wasn't found guilty of a felony or anything in that instance. He was just com- he was he was just uh, told that he had to pay money. Uh huh. Well, well, he he had Sorry. the felony of the money, the laundry, uh, the Stormy Daniels money. He he's guilty of that. So, a porn star whose story, again, changed multiple times, including during the proceedings, um, before, the, before it even was an issue, when it came up in 2016. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, was dismissed out of hand because, well, she didn't feel victimized by it at all. She actually spoke of it glowingly mm-hmm. in a way to try to slander his persona but never claimed that it was a bad experience then fast forward to now and all of a sudden it's the worst experience of her life a a, a porn star (laughs) who signed a hush money deal so she violated a contract apparently A contract that uh, Trump apparently was not involved with at all. Yeah. It was his lawyer and his accountant that uh, dealt with that. Well, yeah, there's 13 charges. Yeah, they charged every single time a transaction went back and forth between the two, the lawyer and the accountant. That's, That's the 13 charges was each payment... Once for the lawyer, se- once for the accountant sending the lo- lawyer money, once for the lawyer receiving money. So one transaction, two crimes. Yeah, that's that's our justice system right there. Yeah. Well, he defrauded the banks, who all testified in his favor. I don't know how we got on that tangent, but it's relevant. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. So Kamala Harris. Ah, Kamala Harris. Communist Harris. Communist Harris. Comrade Kamala. Comrade Kamala. I think that's... (laughs) So... (laughs) I need to find that and tweet it out. Um... At one of the rallies, Donald Trump asked the crowd, should I have her nickname be Comrade Kamala? If if yes, let me know. If yes, Comrade Kamala. And the crowd cheers. No? And it's just crickets. There was more of a democratic process in that moment of Donald (laughs) Trump's campaign rally than there was in the entire nomination of Kamala Harris. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) That's, that's fair. (laughs) So stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Anyways, Kamala Harris has said multiple times that Donald Trump's a racist because he wants to build a border wall, among other things. And according to Axios, if she's elected president, Kamala Harris pledges to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on the wall along the southern border. A project she once opposed and called un-American during the Trump administration. Huh. 
Now, what's interesting about this is Axios is saying this because in her acceptance speech or whatever, she talked about how she's going to be strong on the border and protect America's border and blah, 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 blah. And support the bipartisan bill that Donald Trump said shouldn't be signed, which I agree with Donald Trump should not be signed because it's full of a bunch of pointless, useless crap. Yes. Aside from the fact that there's already plenty of laws in place and spending in place for the border. We just actually need to have an executive in office to execute the law. Z laws. Um, but yeah, I, I heard that little snippet and I, and I about lost my mind because if you go to that uh, link I sent in the reply, Mike, it'll mm. take you to another auction site that you'll get lost in. Gov planet. Uh huh. Richie brothers auction. Nice. Yeah. If you search for bollard wall six results as of today will pop up oh yeah look at them arizona 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 they are all in arizona huh and arizona as soon as the democrat governor took office did what um Oh, tore down the wall that Eric, the state had put in place and had the National Guard stop building the wall that Trump was executing from Congress to be built in place. You can buy it right now, sections of it. Hmm. Five, five sections of wall in each uh, lot. Bid starting at $5. Oh, there's a couple of lots with four sections. I apologize. But yeah. Right there. Biden-Harris administration border wall. Right there. Ready to be shipped out to the highest bidder to be used as scrap. Hmm. Starting at $5 for all that steel. Yep. There you go. That's that's her border security here. Sitting on pallets. <laughs> you can get an aircraft engine stand for five bucks. <laughs> like I said, you'll get lost in there. It's a great website. That's where I found the locomotives if you want to try to make a locomotive street legal. You could get an ammunition trailer for $500. There is no ammunition in it, though, if you're... That they know of. <laughs> yet <laughs> an all-terrain crane yeah it's where the government sells all of its no longer used items in such vehicles they're selling an erection boat <laughs> i <laughs> Don't don't know what that is. Uh, it's a sure. boat used to construct things Not on the sure water. I want <clears throat> to know what that is? Bill Clinton comes out of the woodwork. Oh, you can get a Cessna apparently. Oh my gosh, they have like twenty unused compact track loaders for oh, like yes. fifteen hundred bucks each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it starts. The auction is five minutes long. Jeez. So in that five-minute window is when all the bids are calculated. It's fun. It's a fun brand, site to get lost brand in. Brand new stuff. Uh-huh. Like, what? Brand new stuff just getting sold away because, well, we had the budget for it, and we bought it, and now uh, we don't need it. Uh, storage containers. Mm hmm Dude. You can get... They're... They're... They st the 20 foot shipping containers start at five bucks. That's where the bidding starts. I know. That's what I said. They start at five bucks. The bidding ends at like 200 bucks. It's a five minute that's window of bidding. That's still ridiculously nothing. That's nothing. That's so cheap. Hmm. All right. Where's the firearms? Not on that website. Those bastards. Yep. 
Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if they're destroyed or something like that. Oh, speaking of firearms, I didn't add this to the thing, but the, uh, was it Kansas judge that said, uh, dropped all charges against a guy that had a machine gun? Oh, yes, yes, I did see that. <laughs> and said, uh, uh, Second Amendment says that he can have that, so piss off. <laughs> Perfect. Surprisingly, it's being appealed to a higher court. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> can't imagine why <laughs> take it to the supreme court let them face it down again of course they'll probably just do what they always do and just punt oh i don't want to get it we'll just punt oh okay <laughs> another fun thing is uh you remember oklahoma um yes it's state yes the uh uh but superintendent what about them? He he put out um, for the school year. Uh, we talked about the story. He had all schools have to teach, have to have oh, the yeah. Ten Commandments, the Bible. Yes, yeah, 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 right, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Republican-led legislature threatened articles in, of impeachment against him. Really, for violating his role as a superintendent. So he went to the. <laughs> He went to the House floor and gave an epic speech telling him, let's start the impeachment. Let's go. <laughs> let's make it public. <laughs> uh, they dropped the charges against him, at least publicly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he walked in with the largest cojones that legislature's ever seen and <laughs> dared them <laughs> to follow through. <laughs> you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> I need to tell some people about that auction website. The government one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can sometimes find some great vehicles on there. Sometimes. Do they ship? I don't. I was looking more like the mechanics tools and stuff, dude. Oh yeah, they've got like nineteen assorted tool cabinets. I mean, I don't know what the military mechanics toolboxes look like, but our mechanic at my work has like twenty thousand dollars worth of tools in his chests, and he's probably missing some. and would love to have replacements. Right. <laughs> and I imagine with, with some of those, I remember seeing like it's it's not just one. It's buying like a whole pallet of them, basically. And they yeah, have also that's that's 19 have all- assorted tool chests. Yeah. And I imagine between all of them, you could probably get at least one complete set, if not two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the 10 millimeter. That's, that's you never have a 10 millimeter. Never, never. Um. So back to Kamala. So Donald Trump is the dictator, right? Because he said, mm-hmm. day one, I'm going to be a dictator. He said that <clears throat> verbatim. Those words, exactly. Exactly. That's what he said, except it's not what he said. Yeah, he said he'd be a dictator day one. Full context, basically saying he's going to be signing executive orders, undoing the executive orders that Joe Biden did. He just needs to sign one executive order that states that all previous executive orders are now discontinued. Null and void. Just one. And if if Congress starts screaming over it, then, I I don't know, maybe do your job. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, if you undo those executive orders, all hell's going to break loose. And? And? It's not my problem. (laughs) It's a power that the executive was never actually supposed to have. So (laughs) that would be ideal. Let's just undo that. That would be ideal. But yeah, he, he, he said he would be like a dictator on day one because of all the reversing, of course, he's going to be doing through the executive powers that he has. Worst thing he could do for their entire agenda is just undo every Everything. single executive order. Uh-huh. Because there's, there's stuff from 80 years ago that's still in effect. Uh-huh. No need to be. Well, in you need those executive orders because this this one tells the ATF what to do. 
Oh. Not my jaw. Not my jaw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll make a new one to replace it. That all it says is disband. <laughs> all right, fine. Fine, you got me. ATF is no more. Any other agencies that are affected, <laughs> that are affected by this executive by this executive order? order. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> this is torture. Best, best Chain to, me to the wall. Best to start with the list of agencies that would affect, and then start signing ATF no more, FBI no more, CIA no more. <laughs> <laughs> We can just make it all one. If, if your agency can be summed up in three letters, it is no more. Yes. Well, we're the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. You're the ATF. It even says on all of your coats, all of your equipment, ATF. Good luck. God bless. <laughs> well, the IRS, how are we going to collect money? Uh, let's see. Constitution says here. Oh, Congress shall. <laughs> You're all here working full time. You might as well work full yeah. time. Full time. What about all the people that will lose their jobs? Oh, maybe they can learn IT or something like that. I believe that's what Joe Biden said to do. <laughs> or is that Obama? I can't remember which one. <laughs> it's okay. The USPS is safe. <laughs> They've got four letters. <laughs> Crushed it. Crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> also, the oldest alphabet agency that used to actually be good until private companies figured out how to do it better. Make USPS great again. <laughs> <laughs> That's lost cause. That's not happening. They have they have their own investigative branch, okay? And they have an armed section <laughs> they as well. Have an armed section as well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Like I said, Donald Trump is the dictator. Day one. Of course he is. This is uh, Kamala Harris. Oh, Comrade, Kamala. Comrade Kamala. Answering a question from a reporter... Real quick, before she had to leave, before saying more things off script. Oh, is this the one that got arrested for a hate crime? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Adding to your gun control agenda? Yeah, I think it's a great idea, but I mean, listen, I, I don't think we lack for great ideas. As I've said many times, we've been having great ideas for decades. The problem is that Congress does not have the courage to act. And that is why, from the beginning, I have said my agenda includes attempting to get Congress to act but if they don't within the first 100 days of my administration, I'm going to take executive action. Because what we need is action. Adding to oh. control agenda? Yeah, I think it's... Oh. Asking about gun control agenda. Because, again, still, on her website, there is nothing on what her policies are. No, because if they announced those to the public, nobody would vote for her. No. So they just Which was proven when they didn't vote for her at all. At all. This election or last election <laughs> to be both times president <laughs> elect. <laughs> Weird yeah. how that do worked. You, do you have what's your policy on gun control? Yeah, Congress just doesn't have the courage to act. So if they don't do something in the first hundred days, I'll use executive action to take care of it. Oh, Oh, oh! That's only what every dictator has ever done. <laughs> <laughs> only, only everyone, ever, <laughs> is disarm the people. And it's not the first time she says something like that. There's the one, one video from when she tried to be president the first time <clears throat> um, and she s says that uh, if you have a patent, we can just take it. No, 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 you can't. I, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to lean towards no on that one. I feel like this stems from, you know, she just 
did things a certain way when she was in in charge of arresting people and confiscating things. <laughs> Just took them. Before. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, she's full of hope and joy. Well, she's probably pissed drunk. That's where the joy comes from. She's full of vodka and Jack is what she's full of. And uh, the hope, well, I mean, that's what the, that's what the uh, National Socialist Party of Germany once ran on. <laughs> Back in the 30s, hope, 1930s. Joy. Yeah. Followed by gun confiscation. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Oh, yeah, he's he's backing her, too. Oh, is he? He stopped asking questions, apparently. He stopped asking questions. <laughs> Damn it, Jesse. <sighs> Never stop asking questions, sir. Especially when a communist is in front of your face. Actually, there is a time that you stop asking questions when a communist is in front of your face, but it's uncouth to speak about that on... Recorded broadcast, apparently. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Something about helicopters? I don't know. Napalm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or in the... Uh, uh, or the MacArthur solution. Just nuke a line across there and they're not crossing it. What if we just create an irradiated zone across this area and then there's no more communists coming in? <laughs> You're not wrong, MacArthur. <laughs> uh, we lost him too soon. Yeah. Um, the final thing I have is infuriating on multiple levels. Oh, good. Yep. Ending on an infuriating note, because that's what we do. Yay. This was in the town of S Surprise, Arizona. Oh, that's surprising. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yes, this this lady um, had, had some issues she wanted to bring to the council, city council. And the mayor took umbrage with what she had to say numerous public records requests that I have open right now that are quote pending legal review that I am entitled Massey, to request. I've, I've got to interrupt you here because Okay, are you going to stop this, the timer? This is the public meeting forum that you agree to when you speak and I want to read this to you that um, this there the mayor are speaking. oral communications during the city council meeting may not be used to lodge charges or complaints against any employee of the city or members of the body, regardless of whether such person is identified in the presentation by the name or by any other reference that tends to identify him or her. That's all fine, well, and good, but that's so, a viol violation so that, of my First Amendment yeah, rights. Yeah, so that's, well, this is your warning, okay? A warning and for what? A warning for attacking the city attorney personally. Um, this is all factual information. It doesn't matter. You're violating my this First is, Amendment this rights. Is, this is what you agree to when you... For speaking, this is the form. It is unconstitutional, Mayor Hall. Well, it's not unconstitutional. It is. And if you're the gonna, Supreme Court has upheld, I could get up here and I could swear at you for three straight minutes, and it is protected no, speech no, by can't. the Supreme Court. It is. No, you can't. Why don't you? She is correct. She is correct. Yes. Hundred percent correct. Hundred and ten percent. It doesn't matter what the city hall has you sign in order for you to get up and exercise your free speech. It's not free speech. <laughs> if you have to sign something to be allowed to speak. Hence why the Supreme Court ruled, uh, yes. no, you can't do that. Yeah. As well as Supreme Court saying, uh, yeah, they can swear and curse at you all they want. That's it's part of free speech. It's part of free speech. And you as a public official who are paid by the are people are that are speaking by to the you. the people that are speaking to you are required to listen. Uh-huh. Listen, Linda. <laughs> listen. Yes, then. <laughs> You look at case law. No, you can't. I can. So if you want to be also the chair is engaged in debate, so point of order. Also, the chair is engaged in debate, so point of order. Do you want to be escorted out of here? 
Do you want to be escorted out You're of your car? You're violating my First Amendment rights. Talking. <laughs> you are violating. So he's he's not paying attention to the Supreme Court. So then she defers back to their own rules, mm -hmm. which says when someone is speaking at the podium to the city council, city council isn't allowed to debate with the person. Yeah. So he's breaking his own rules that he's having people sign my first amendment rights that's your opinion it's okay. not a matter of opinion do you want to be escorted out miss massey because that's what's going to happen and it's going to happen in the future also anytime you attack that's any why you change the rules or any that's why city, you change the rules this has been on the back of this form i understand mayor hall but that is completely unconstitutional no, it's You're not. also engaging in debate, and so you should actually be anyway, yielding the floor to somebody okay. else managing. Chief, could you have somebody <laughs> come down here and, and uh, escort Ms. Massey out? Really? Is that necessary? Chamber? Yes, I in think In front it of is. my 10-year-old daughter, you're going to escort That's me fine. out for expressing my... She so now, realizing he's lost the debate that he wasn't supposed to engage in in the first place, calls on the police chief. Who does the police chief answer to? Uh, the mayor. Oh, the mayor. Oh. Yes. As opposed oh. to the local sheriff who answers to the people. To the people. Hmm. Supposed to. Answer. Supposed to. To the people. Yes. Huh. Calls on the police chief who answers to the mayor to get her off the floor. She can go with you. She can go with you. I'm not leaving. Well. <laughs> um, I'm, no. I'm expressing my first. Do not touch me. Do not put your hands on me. Do not put your hands on me. Come on out. Do not put your hands on me. Come out with me now before you get arrested. Do you understand? This, are you detaining me? Yes. Why am I being detained? Under what charges? Under what charges? Okay. Oh, right. that's an illegal arrest. Yep. He did not tell her the charges for which she was being detained. When she asked, that is an illegal arrest. Illegal arrest. On top of that, every person in that room should be ashamed of themselves. Every person in that room should be arrested. Well, at least the, everybody on that uh, sitting that up board. on the high yes. wall. Yes. Yeah. Every person sitting in the audience should be ashamed of themselves because we're not standing up. Yeah. I would have lost my ever loving mind and stood up there. Oh yeah. I, the, I'd probably be arrested for tackling the cop. Probably. And or punching the mayor. <laughs> or both, <laughs> depending on how fast the cop got up after I tackled him. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and and the rest of it is so off camera. There. I have personal property. Hold on. I have. You cannot stop me. Yeah. Now the cop is keeping her from getting her personal effects, which uh, you're entitled to when you're being escorted out by police. Mm -hmm. So. And her 10-year-old daughter is left to figure out how to get her mom's stuff and find out where her mom's being taken. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Multiple issues going on here. Yeah. City Hall and a mayor. Hey, if there's one person on here at all that thinks that this is wrong, they should be speaking up. Yeah. And clarifying to the mayor, like, Hey, jackass. <laughs> You're not king. <clears throat> he certainly acts like it, though. Oh, absolutely. He's... How long... Hold on. How long has he been mayor? Let's see if we can figure that out. Skip Paul. How long has he been mayor? It's probably going to mostly pull up this thing when you search for it. <laughs> Since November 2018. Recently. Uh, so he was appointed by the city council to fill uh, Walcott's vacant seat after Walcott resigned in November 2018, and then he was elected in 2020. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. There's an article with Arizona Central. Surprise surprise facing legal challenge over activist arrest at meeting. Good. Good. I they can't should. I can't look at it because Well, if you want to look at the story, you have to pay for a subscription. So <laughs> 
Anyway. A uh, uh, First Amendment group is threatening to sue them. Oh, th- this should be a <laughs> orgasmic case for a First Amendment lawyer. Oh, yes. I found another article that... He's been on city council since 2008. Heated exchange during a surprise city council meeting ended with a West Valley mom in handcuffs. Mayor Skip Hall said she violated a city rule that bans complaints about city workers during public comment. Arizona Arizona Family, which is the news thing I'm reading, Uh spoke with some experts who argued the city violated her First Amendment rights, Mm -hmm. like she said. Yeah. I think that she may have a case against the city of Surprise, says she, the constitutional law attorney Robert McWhip. 100%. Who, right, wired her. He, he has to legally say, may have a case. <laughs> <laughs> the physical removal by being handcuffed by a deputy, well, let's just say that is a pretty bad look. I think it was a poor response of the city council to a citizen talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The issue here is that they are restricting her speech. We are allowed to criticize our government and who is in our government. So, yep. Mayor-elect Kevin Sarter sent Arizona family the following statement when asked about it. As Americans, our right to free speech is fundamental, especially when it comes to holding our government accountable. What happened to Rebecca Massey is unacceptable. No citizen should ever be arrested for voicing their concerns, especially in a forum specifically designed for public input. My administration will prioritize transparency, respect, and the protection of our citizens, which means he won't win because, you know, the machine won't let him. First Amendment rights. We will never arrest or silence our residents for expressing their views or questioning their elected officials. This is not just about Rebecca Massey. It's about every resident of Surprise. Your voice matters, and it will always be heard. Uh The right to free speech is at the heart of our democracy. And as (laughs) as your next mayor, I will ensure that every citizen's voice is heard, respected, and protected. While there must be reasonable limits on speech in public forums, such as prohibiting violence, threats, or profanity, this recent incident did not come close to crossing those lines. As mayor, I will ensure that our city is a place where open dialogue is encouraged, not suppressed. We are stronger when every voice is heard. Hmm. Yeah, I'll shoot that link over to you. Yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, he was on the city council since 2008. Um, before the city council, he was on the planning and zoning commission. He also spent several decades working in various capacities in the hospitality and real estate industries. He's the vice president of a new home builder in California. Prior to that, he was ten, served 10 years as a senior vice president of a hospitality company based in Japan. Most of his professional career was spent opening and operating several restaurants and hotels along the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, so basic, basically he... Uh, did all his California stuff, retired, and became mayor of Arizona City. There you go. <clears throat> that's that's Skip. Good old Skip. Another First Amendment attorney, David Bodney told the Arizona Republic that state law permits cities to place reasonable restrictions on public comments, but the law permits people to address the public body on any issue within the jurisdiction of the public body, which he said would include comments about the city attorney's conduct and compensation. Uh Uh-huh. So, yes, it is pretty clear cut they violated her First Amendment rights. Yep. Yep. I hate when these lawsuits happen because then all that money gets spent into it and it's not spent somewhere else. Okay, maybe elect people that don't do stupid stuff. Yeah. Then you won't have stupid lawsuits that they have to pay for. Maybe. I, it's a thought. <clears throat> Possibility. Well, he's he's just a nice guy and he got a little, got a little heated. No, he's not a nice guy. 
He, he thinks he's in charge of everything. He is a satchel of Richards. <laughs> he's a satchel of them, huh? Yes. <laughs> He's not just a Richard. He's a satchel of Richards. Yes. But his name is Skip. (laughs) (laughs) That's not in his favor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything fun or exciting. Quick. No, I don't I don't know. No. No, did that, did that, did that, did all that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Harris is sitting down with her, with CNN for her first interview. Oh, is she? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, someone in the comments on that story has a montage of some of the other people we've shared in City Hall. Like the one guy from a foreign country that brought the Supreme Court (laughs) case with him while speaking to his city hall, knowing full well that they were going to try to censor him. (laughs) Then called, then called him uh, Mussolini. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Meanwhile, in, Utah, there's this big fight with the uh, um, ballot initiatives. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm leaning towards voting in favor of the legislature just because every progressive I see in Utah is absolutely upset at the legislature for daring to try to make it so they can have some control over ballot initiatives. <clears throat> but at the same time, um, the Republican, the Utah Republican legislature is full of progressives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, the, lean, the wording is far, far, far too vague on it for me. It, yeah. I, the, I can't in good conscience vote for it. <clears throat> yeah. You have the, you have a extremely progressive group suing, uh, the state legislature for not, f- for not following a ballot initiative to have a third party redistrict the um, districts in Utah. Mm -hmm. And the state legislature took that into consideration and then just did it themselves because the state constitution says it's the legislature's job to do that. Mm -hmm. So ballot initiative does not supersede state constitution. That's, but apparently according to the Supreme court, it does. And the Supreme Court of Utah ruled so vaguely that it opened up the ballot initiative to anyone and everyone, including outside of Utah, which is suboptimal, I would say. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, basically made it so the state legislature would have no way to correct any actions, positive or negative, from ballot initiatives unless another ballot initiative came out to correct the course. And so in response to the vague ruling by a progressive (laughs) Utah Supreme Court, the progressive Republican body wrote a vague law (laughs) to correct the action. Well, and it's it's not even a vague law. It's a vague, vague amendment to the Constitution of Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm like, I I agree with the idea, but I can't vote for this legislature. The principle is there. The context is not. Yes. Yes. 
Not not without a, a serious amendment to fix the wording on it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's <laughs> that's something where we have to have an emergency session for it. Okay, cool. You wrote it horribly. <laughs> how about how about we take our time on this one? Seriously. Well, what if a ballot initi- initiative comes forward? How about we take our time on it? I think we should start a ballot initiative to fix it. <laughs> I mean, technically, we can. <laughs> I, I'm at the point with uh, Utah's government where... Burn it down and start over? Just uh, pretty much. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to vote for Lyman. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. At best... Uh, Lyman wins. That's the best outcome is Lyman wins. And then we find out which Republicans in the legislature actually are conservative and all that stuff. <clears throat> and which ones side with the Democrats to just fight against Lyman the entire time. <clears throat> or Cox wins and we get pretty much the same thing, which sucks, which is basically having a Democrat in office. Cause you know, well, if a Democrat wins, then then what? We're going to have a governor that allows illegal immigrants to just come into the state and not tell the uh, county authorities that illegal immigrants are coming in? Or have a governor that's uh, open to 15-minute cities? Or have a governor that's willing to work with the WEF to implement all kinds of who knows what? Or a governor who vetoes every conservative bill unless it's got a supermajority and he legally can't? Or a governor that uh, is totally fine with Utah losing its coal power until, like you said, a veto-proof majority sends a bill to his desk uh, to sign to stop the selling of Utah's coal power. (laughs) Can't can't be having that in office. No, no. Yeah, so we got to make sure we have Cox there. Oh, that's everything that Cox did. So we get more of that. <clears throat> or the Democrat wins and the Republican legislature actually unites to, you know, not let progressive policies happen. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Just because there are those progressive Republicans that still will vote no on a Democrat thing because... Just like the Trump derangement people, there's those on the Republican side that see the D and say no, just because. Even though they would 100% sign it if it had an R next to to their name. Now I've got to make a shirt. (laughs) See the D? (laughs) Vote no? (laughs) See the D? (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) And you're welcome. (laughs) Yes, that's that's where I'm at. That's that's my version of burn it down. That's terrible. Let's throw a vote to Phil Lyman. <laughs> <laughs> Best case scenario, we get Phil Lyman. Worst case scenario, we get one of the other two. Uh huh. The guy that every institution inside and outside of Utah hates. Every institution that I don't like hates. <clears throat> or every institution that I hate still has power. Hmm. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a tough call. Phil Lyman is the Donald Trump of Utah. <laughs> Do I agree with him 100%? Absolutely not. Would I rather have something, someone else? Absolutely. However, everything I hate hates him. So, <laughs> so bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It won't, because I never vote for the winner. <laughs> and vote for someone else. <laughs> exactly. That's why you should vote for Cox. No, see, I want to win. And that doesn't mean I'll take second base. That means I'm voting for the guy that's going to hit a home run. That, that's what I want. I want the home runs. 
I want to get all, I want to score. Kind of put all your money on black. Babe Ruth or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the great Bambi. Bambino. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Pick up right in the middle of that. That's embarrassing. So embarrassing. <sighs> well, well, that's it. That's all. That all you got? That's all I got. I'm sure I could go on more, but that's all I'm I got. Sure, we could. <laughs> it's all right. What would Jesus do? He'd forgive them. Do you hear that? That's the sound of forgiveness. That's the sound of people drowning, Carl. That is what forgiveness sounds like screaming and then silence. Make millstones great again. Make millstones <laughs> great again. <laughs> Uh, like, subscribe, follow, check out Redemption Tactical at the link below. With all that, Galatians 4.16. <gasps> Bye. Bye. Did you make an outro clip? Yet? Of course not. <laughs> Do we have an outro clip? Do we even have an outro clip? Does one exist? I've been just waiting, just waiting for it. For an outro. A whole new outro. A dazzling scene that hardly anyone sees. All right, I'm going to cut you off. What's, what's even better is this is at the end. Yes, it's the best. They it's still the, won't know what's going sweet on. Sweet cherry on the top. <laughs> sweet cherry on top. Now we can start. Now we can start. <laughs> Red means go. Now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> he's got the clap and he's giving it to you. Now that they got what out of the way? You'll never know. We'll and neither will never we. never know. We'll go back and listen to this and have no idea what we were talking about before None. we started recording. Zero idea. <laughs> Your only hint is that Trevor was singing. That narrows it down to anything. Yes, it does. <laughs> Pop culture references and singing. That's what I do. I am a living meme. <laughs> a walking encyclopedia of memes. The meme is me. Uh-huh. Me is meme. I am a meme lord. I aspire <laughs> to show up to something someday and get a picture taken that makes me a meme. Like, well, I mean, that random guy at the soccer game that became the not impressed meme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, but you already are the very popular gif of the guy that falls down in the shower and the f shower curtain that stumbles with him. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you're you're already living legend and you're doing it vicariously <laughs> through your doppelganger. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I've yet to be recognized as the guy from that gift though <laughs> when I go out and about. Oh, you want that kind of popularity. I mean, I don't want five minutes of fame. I want 10 seconds Chan of meme fame. <laughs> Channing, Channing Tatum talks about how of all the things that he's ever done in film, the thing he's remembered for is the I am Jeff line from 22 Jump Street. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jeff. <laughs> he's, he, 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 like, he did an interview where he talked about it and he's like, it's weird the things that people like glom onto and think are just hilarious and make into memes and pop culture references and stuff. He's like, he can't go anywhere without somebody nearby yelling out, my name is Jeff. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen those shows. I need to watch those again. <sighs> anyway, are we ready? I am ready. You're ready. If you're ready, that's all that matters. That's Here we all go. that's needed.